Zabari Shesha Aloka Provesha Nidra Chari Uta Jiva Vibhavari Shesha Aloka Provesha Nidra Chari Uta Jiva Bolo Hari Hari Mukunda Morari Rama Krishna Hayo Griva Bolo Hari Hari Mukunda Morari Rama Krishna Hayo Griva Nashimhavamana Sri Madhu Chudana Rajendra Nandana Shama Mahavamana Sri Madhu Sudana Brajendra Nandana Shyama Putana Gatana Kaitaba Shatana Jaya Dasharati Rama Putana Gatana Kaitaba Shatana Jaya Dasharati Rama Yashoda Dhula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purantara Yashoda Dhula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purantara Priyajana Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhora Gopi Priyajana Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhora Ravana Thakura Makana Taskara Gopi Jana Vastrahari Rakala Gopavindapala Chitahari 
Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam namaskrityam Naram chaiva narotamam Daivim sarasatim vyasam Tato jaya mudhirahet Nasta praeshu vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Nashtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter Number 1 The History of the Life of Ajamila Text Number 10 Quachin nivarta te badrat. Quachin nivarta te badrat. Quachin nivarta te badrat. Quachin nivarta te badrat. Quachit charati tatpuna. Quachit charati tatpuna. Quachit charati tatpuna. Prayas chitam mato partam. Prayas chitam mato partam. Manye kunjara so chavat. Manye kunjara so chavat. Quachin nivarta te badrat. Quachit charati tatpuna Prayas chitam mato partam 
manye kunjara sochavat Kvachinne vartate badrat Kvachit charati tapunaha Prai aschitam mato partam Manye kunjara sochavat Go ahead. Nivartate Abadra Abadra from sinful activities from, from sinful activities Quachi Sometimes Sometimes Charati Charati Commit Tat that, that sinful activities That sinful activity Punaha Again Prayaschita The process of atonement Ato, therefore, therefore apartam, apartam, useless, useless. manye, I consider, I consider kunjara sauchavat, kunjara sauchavat. Exactly, like the bathing of an elephant. Om Magyana Timaranda Syakyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha 
Patitanam Pavanhebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're hearing how Maharaj Parikshit had been tested by Sukadeva Goswami. Sukadeva Goswami want to see if his uh, if uh, his student is is uh, is properly considering the situation. Maharaj Parikshit wanted to know about delivering the people from hellish life. And Sukadeva Goswami told him, atonement, you can do atonement. Perform some atonement, do some prayaschit, and in that way you'll get relief from the sinful reactions. But Maharaj Pariksha said, no, that's useless. And so you think, we may think, oh, well, look, you should, uh, shouldn't argue with the spiritual master, right? Spiritual master says something, we take it as true. So sometimes people blindly follow. They blindly follow the spiritual teacher. And the spiritual teacher is tricking, is, is, is testing them. And they're thinking, oh no, my spiritual master said we have to do this. So. We have to not follow blindly, but we have to use intelligence. Follow the spiritual master, but with intelligence. Just like Sukadeva Goswami is testing Maharaj Parikshit, and he said, well, if they do atonement, they can be saved from hell. But Maharaj Parikshit understood, well, if, if they do some atonement and they get relief from their sins, they'll go on doing more sins. They won't stop their sinful activities. So he said, what is the use of that kind of atonement? So Maharaj Parikshit wants to hear about actually understanding the cause of the disease. Sometimes, you know, if you have some illness, if you just treat the symptoms, you just treat the symptom, it won't be enough. You have to know what is the disease. Just like you may have a fever, and so, you, oh, take something for the fever. But then there's a cough, a cough. oh, take something for the cough as well. And, and you don't actually get cured because you've got something else, you've got, you may have COVID, you, you may have the COVID disease or something, you know. So if you take some, something for the cough and something for the fever, it's not going to cure. That's not enough, you have to take something more. So we don't just treat the symptom, we have to know what is the disease. So people are doing sinful activities, you don't just counteract one sinful activity. We have to understand what is the cause of the sinful activity. So the cause of the sinful activity is ignorance, right? Material desires, sinful desires come due to ignorance. So we have to remove that ignorance. That is important. And how to remove that ignorance? will be explained by Sukadeva Goswami. But he's not explaining immediately. He wants to make sure that the person he's instructing is serious in their practice. Just like in Krishna consciousness, when people come to Krishna consciousness, we don't immediately give them initiation. And we don't immediately give them the Brahman thread and put them on the altar to worship the deities, right? There's testing. We're, devotees are tested. We're all tested. You want to be a Brahman? 
it's not just I'm following for principles, so I'm a Brahmin. No, we have to show that we're serious. We have to show our commitment to Krishna. So we come to Krishna consciousness, and there's a trial period before you get initiation. Before you get initiation, there's a test. They have to see that are they regular, are they doing service, are they cooperating with the devotees, or are they just arguing? This is the preparation for accepting them into the Krishna consciousness movement. Because with initiation, they become part of the Krishna consciousness movement. They become part of Prabhupada's family. So we want to make sure that people who come to Prabhupada's family, that they're genuine, that they're going to commit themselves, they're not going to give up and go away, that they will remain faithful and loyal and, and regularly serve. So there's a testing period for this. The test, the, just like Sukadeva Goswami is testing Maharaj Parikshit. Now Maharaj Parikshit has only seven days left to live. He's, ha he's preparing for his death. It's coming very soon. But still Sukadeva Goswami is testing him because he knows that if he doesn't test him, it won't be very good. He would take it very easy. It, so similarly coming to Krishna consciousness movement. Or we could say, oh somebody comes, they want to get initiated. Okay, I'll give them initiate. No, we have to test them first and make sure that they're serious, that they really want to serve Krishna and that they're going to be responsible devotees. You, you can go to some Buddhist temples and you walk in the door and they'll say, ah, have you got a guru yet? And they'll give you the picture of the Buddhist master and say, here's the picture for you. Here's Sifu's picture. And they'll give you the, and they, sometimes they will even give you a name as well. You know, they'll do everything very quickly. There's no, there's no trial, no testing. But people walk in the door and have to, you walk around and, and then they go away and they, and they don't take it, they don't do anything. They don't change. They don't, they didn't give up any bad habits. And they think, no, I got my Buddhist master, I got my teacher. And, and they just, they continue with all their activities the same, they don't change. So the idea of accepting the spiritual teacher is there should be change. The spiritual teacher wants to change the devotee, that they will become very pure and very loyal and very fixed in Krishna consciousness. And so Sukadeva Goswami is testing Maharaj Parikshit to make sure that he is really serious, he is really committed to this task, to go out of the material world. Hmm. And just like Narada Muni tested Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj was only the young boy, five years old, and he was going into the forest to find God because his mother told him, well, first of all, Dhruva Maharaj wanted to get a kingdom because he was upset with his mother. His, step, his stepmother had told him, you cannot sit on your father's lap. You are not born in my, from my womb. If you want to sit on your father's lap, you will have to take birth again from my womb. And then you'll be qualified to sit on the lap of your father. So Dhruva Maharaj was Kshatriya. And Kshatriya's nature, they, you know, they, they have that passionate nature and something, somebody says something to them which it's not pleasing to them, they don't like it. So Dhruva Maharaj was upset with his uh, stepmother and he went crying to his own mother. And his own mother said, well, what can I do? I'm not the favorite child of your father. So then he said, then who can help me? 
And so his mother said, well, you go to God. When people are in distress, when they have some need, they go to God. What happens? Go, goes on. So his mother said, go to God. So then he asked his mother, where will I find God? Where is he? And so his mother said, well, many people, they go to the forest to find God. Many yogis and sages, they go and live in the forest and they, fi they find God there. So Dhruva Maharaj then said, then I'm going to go. And he went, he left home and he went to the forest. But on his way to the forest, Narada Muni came. And Narada Muni told him, oh, no, no, you're just a young boy. You should go home. Come back when you're grown up. You're too young. It would be too difficult for you to be in the forest. But Narada Muni, uh, Dhruva Maharaj was very determined. Right? Dhruva means determined. So he, he told Narada Muni, he said, are you going to help me or not? If you're going to help me, tell me where I can find God. But don't waste my time. I'm going to the forest. Narada Muni saw he was very determined. And so he gave him instruction and he told him, you go to Madhuvan, the forest of Madhuvan. It's a beautiful forest. And you go there and you... There's a lake there, you take bath there three times a day, bathe three times early in the morning, midday in the, in the evening, take bath three times a day, and also gave him mantra and told him, you just stay there. And you, so Dhruva Maharaj went there, and he, of course he did great tapasya, he controlled his eating, in the beginning, he was eating only the, the dry leaves and fruits which were there from the trees. That was the first. Then after that, then he would drink only water. He wouldn't eat anything. He'd just take some water. And then after that, he stopped taking water. And he was controlling his breathing. And he was controlling his breathing. And it was so powerful. Oh, and he was doing, he was standing on one leg also. And he was standing on one leg with his hands raised up in the air and he was chanting the mantra Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya and his mind was fixed on the Lord and he was controlling his breathing and his breathing was so intense that the whole universe became affected. And even the demigods were suffocating because Dhruva Maharaj was not breathing. That his activities were so powerful that it affected the whole universe. He was so convinced, so determined to achieve success. So, all the demigods were in trouble and they approached the Lord that what's happening? We can't breathe. We're not getting any air to breathe. And the Lord told them, he said, oh yes, yeah, this is Dhruva Maharaj. He said, okay, I will go there. And I will pacify him. And so the Lord went there to see Dhruva Maharaj and pacified, told Dhruva Maharaj, okay, you've done enough tapasya. It's enough now will give you your wish. You can get the kingdom. You can become the, the king. So that was Dhruva Maharaj. He got to see God. But uh, here you see, we're hearing about uh, sinful people. What do sinful, sinful people do? They have material desires. Dhruva Maharaj had a desire. He had material desire and he went to God for help. But ordinary sinful people, they have material desires. They don't go to God. Ordinary common people, they think, I'll do everything myself. They don't have faith in God. They don't approach God to help them. Dhruva Maharaj had faith. 
he had the, first of all, his mother had told him, and so the, that was good for him, and he was very determined himself to follow. What instructions he got from Narada Muni, he took them very seriously. So those things are important. You get the order from the spiritual master, you have to take it very seriously. Just like Srila Prabhupada told us, well, no, it was Srila, first of all, Srila Prabhupada's spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, he said to our founder Acharya, Bhakti Vedanta Swami, he told him, he said, if you ever get money, use it to print books. So, Srila Prabhupada took that instruction very seriously. He got that instruction, must have been 1930, somewhere between 1933 and 1936. Because in 1936, Srila Siddhanta Sarasati left the world. So before he left the world, he had given this instruction to Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada always remembered that instruction. You get, he told him, if you ever get money, use it to print books. So Prabhupada got money, he print books. But, of course, he also used money to build temples. It's not that, oh, if you ever get money, that means no money for food, means you don't eat means you don't have anywhere to live, you just use all the money to print books. No, of course, not like that. We have to understand the instructions of the spiritual master practically. Hmm. Just like there's a famous story about the, the monk who was riding on the cart. He had a bullock cart and he had all these things and he had some disciples with him. And they were on the car, and somehow, when they were moving, some of his uh, possessions fell off the car. They fell off the car, and the disciples, they just stayed on the car. They didn't get off the car to pick up his possessions. So when they got there in the evening, the monk saw that, hey, what happened to all my things? And the, the disciples said, Oh, they fell off, they fell off miles back up the road. And he said, what? They fell off? You didn't pick them up? And the master said to them, he said, you know, anything falls off the cart, you must pick it up immediately. And so then the next day they were all on the cart and the bullock was moving and the bullock started passing stool. So when the bullock passed stool, then the disciples, they picked up the stool and they were carrying all the stool, you know. And so that was the stupidity of the, the, the disciples, you see. They said, but Guru, you told us whatever falls off the cart, we should pick it up. And it doesn't mean you pick up the stool, right? And so the, sometimes people can be very stupid in understanding how to follow the orders of the spiritual master. So we have to be intelligent. You get the order, you have to know how to apply it. Just like Srila Prabhupada, when he first met his spiritual master, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati immediately said, you are a nice young man. Why don't you preach the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu all over the world? And Prabhupada was like, oh, you know, he was just a young man and he just married and he had young children and, and, he, was, and he, heard this, he heard this man say this to him. He thought, how can I do it? He said, I'm, you know, I have my family and everything. So he couldn't do it immediately because he had responsibilities. But later on, when he was freed of responsibilities, then he took that order up. So he never forgot the order. Although the order was given, he, he couldn't immediately follow it, but later on he did it. So here we see Sukadeva Goswami testing Maharaj Parikshit. 
he's telling him, yes, do atonement, do atonement, will counteract sinful activities. But Maharaj Parikshit is intelligent and he's saying, well, we do atonement, but we'll go on doing sinful activities. So it's not going to help us because we're going to go on with the same bad habits. Right? Just like they put people in the prison and after they've been in prison, they come out and then they do more crime again and go back to prison. So it didn't solve them, putting people in the prison. They spent so much money to put people in prisons and so on. But it doesn't change them, it doesn't get them to give up the bad habits. So what people of course need is the process which will take away even the desire for sinful activities. And that is Krishna consciousness. Of course, people have to learn this process. They have to be educated. So Sukadeva Goswami is testing Maharaj Parikshit. You shouldn't get Krishna consciousness too easily. We want to see that you're going to take it seriously. Just like you come to Krishna consciousness and people think, well, I'm a devotee now. No, but we have to show that we're devotees. We have to act like devotees. You know, oh, we're devotees, yeah, where do you eat? Well, we eat in the restaurant every day, you know, go to the restaurants and Anyway, it's vegetarian. I tell them, no onion, you know, or I pick out the onions, you know. <laughs> like, so people do these kind of things, you know, it's a, it happens. And, oh, and even, even people can be initiated, they can, can be twice initiated, and still they do these kind of things. And they have a cup of coffee in the morning, well, I need it to wake up, you know, I need the caffeine to wake me up, you know. But but you're a devotee, you're a Brahman, you're initiated. Yeah, anyway, you know, I, you know, I, I, yeah, I, need the, I need that to wake up in the morning. I can't wake up without it. No. It's, it's not really good, actually. But people do these kind of things. It happens. I had the, I was on... But we were traveling on the train with a group of devotees and there was this one devotee took a cup of coffee, cup of tea in the morning. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, oh, I have this habit every morning. How on earth did you ever get initiated? Somehow it happens, these things happen. It's not good. Anyway, we try to avoid these things. Try to bring people to the proper platform. Sometimes people are not very honest. So if they cheat, then they will be cheated by Krishna. They're thinking they're cheating Krishna, but they will find Krishna is a better cheat than them. <laughs> Krishna will cheat them. Why? Because they won't get Krishna consciousness. They're thinking they're going to get Krishna consciousness, but if they don't practice carefully, you won't get Krishna consciousness. Krishna says, as you surrender, I reward you accordingly. So Krishna is in the heart of everyone, and he knows the, the sincerity and the efforts of everyone, and he reciprocates accordingly, just as he did with Maharaj Parikshit. Because Maharaj Parikshit was very serious. He knew his death was coming, so he gave up everything. He gave up everything. He left his palace, he left all his royal ornaments and everything. He knew he's only got seven days. He has to prepare very seriously. So he gave up everything and he went away, he left his wife, and he left his family, didn't surround himself with everyone. You know, you read about these people, it was, or Steve Jobs, he left the world a few years ago 
you know, surrounded with his, you know, with the wife and the children there, you know, that's not very auspicious to depart like that because naturally you see your wife, you think of your wife, the time of death means next life you'll become a woman. Next life you have to take birth as a woman, right? Because if you're thinking of the wife at the time of death, and yam yam vapis marambavam chajiti anti kalevaram. Whatever we remember at the end of life, that will determine the next life. So we have to be very careful. So when the man is leaving the body, you get all the women out of the room. No women in the room. Yeah, men there, and the men should be chanting the holy name. The men are there to help you to remember Krishna. Just like Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri was a great devotee. He was sick. He was leaving the body. And Ishwara Puri was serving him. And Ishwara Puri was helping him to remember Krishna by chanting the glories of Krishna. And we saw Prabhupada. You can see the video of Prabhupada leaving the body. Prabhupada, the final lesson, Prabhupada and Vrindavan leaving the body. All the devotees are there, all men, all chanting Hare Krishna. And one devotee is reading Prabhupada's, he's reading uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati's book to him. Another devotee is uh, holding the picture of the deities in front of Prabhupada. And Prabhupada's got the deities garland around his neck. And the devotees are all chanting. And so, like that, you can fix the mind, it's easier to fix the mind. But, you know, if we're surrounded with our material attachments at the end of life, then you come back, you come back again. We think of our factory, you take birth as a rat in the factory, you know, become some rat in that factory. You don't want to, we, so we, we have to prepare ourselves for these things. You know, for when the wife is leaving the body, it's all right for the man to be there. Husband can be there when the wife is leaving, because the wife thinks that the husband, at least next life, she'll become a man. That's better. Right? So Sukadeva Goswami wants to make sure Maharaj Parikshit is very alert and attentive because he wants to take him back to Godhead. He wants that Maharaj Parikshit at the end of life, he's ready to go back to Godhead. This, this body is the preparation. We get initiation. Initiation is the beginning and the preparation to go back to Godhead. And that we will get tested. And definitely the test will, one test will come at the end of life. And we have to be ready to give up, to leave everything. Not to be attached to our nice home. Oh, I have my nice house. Oh, I have my car. Oh, I have my bank balance. Oh, I have this and that. You're going to have to give it all up by the end of life. Otherwise, how will you ever go back to Godhead? You can't take your car with you back to Godhead. Don't worry, you don't need the car. They'll send the airplane to take you back to Godhead. And you, you don't have to book the ticket. They, they will come to take you back to Godhead. But you have to be ready. You can't say, oh, my jewelries, oh, my gold, oh, this, oh, the, oh my wardrobe. Oh, no. No way. You have to be ready to leave everything. Let it go. Just like when, we, when you die, you open the hand, right? You let go of everything. 
So everyone has to renounce. You have to renounce mentally, if not physically, we have to detach ourselves from this world. Otherwise, we have to take birth again. And the Guru is preparing us for that. The Guru, the, this one king became devotee, he got initiation. Guru said, now your kingdom is my kingdom. You have nothing. You just follow me. <laughs> right? Guru took everything away from him. And the king surrendered. He was following the Guru. And the king saw the king is, is actually serious. He's detached from everything. So the king followed the Guru for some time. And then after some time the Guru told him, now go back to the kingdom and be king again. I can see you're detached, you're not attached. So he tested. So like that, we get tested to take the cut. Guru is one who, uh, what is it? There's sadhu, the shastra and shastra. One is sword, and one is scripture. So either you get the sword to cut, or the scripture to cut. These scriptures, Srimad Bhagavatam is to help us cut away from the material world. People don't much like to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. They would rather hear Ramayana or hear Mahabharata. But Srimad Bhagavatam, oh, because so much, it's so all about renouncing, giving up the body. And people, oh no, I'm not ready for that yet. Oh, you're not ready yet. Oh, then you're not ready to go back to Godhead, are you? You have to decide. Do you want, do you really want to go back to Godhead? We should, we should be very serious. All right, any question? tendency to commit sins to other jivas. Well, Krishna's in the heart, but he sees that the living entity has this desire, and they have that desire, just like the father says to the son, don't smoke, don't smoke, it's not good for you, don't smoke. But the son is thinking, you know, I want to smoke, I want to smoke, oh, I want to smoke. And the son is persisting, the father is saying, don't smoke, don't smoke, don't smoke. But the son is insisting, insisting, insisting. And so, after some, at some point, the, the son just, the father says, what can I do? You know, I, I'm, I've told him, I've told him and told him. He doesn't listen and the, the son will go away and smoke. And the father said, what can I, I tried. So the same way, the Lord in the heart is there and he is giving us knowledge and intel, giving, uh, kn with knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. So he will give us knowledge and remembrance and that then when the living entity is still insisting, insisting to do something sinful, then he will allow him to forget because he was so insisting. You allow him to forget because he sees that he has to actually do it in order to learn to give it up. But sometimes people have to do these things in order to learn that it's wrong. Just like people do harm to other living entities and then they're punished, right? They do harm to, they, they maybe go and kill people or something. Then they're punished. They're arrested and they're, they, they, you know, they're, 
they will be put in prison for life or they may be even hung or given the death penalty. You don't know. But they'll be punished. They'll be punished either by the government or spirit, uh, spiritually they'll be punished. Their consciousness will be affected. That they will suffer. If not in this life, in the next life they suffer. They may, they may kill living entities and think nobody knows. But Lord Yamaraj knows. He knows everything and people suffer. So the suffering itself helps people to understand that, you know, I have to do better, I have to do good. I have to stop my sinful activities. So it takes time. We're all on the, on the path. It's like the, the journey, the journey home. So the suffering which we go through is part of the journey to prepare ourselves to go back home, back to God. To give up the sins. The suffering which we go through helps us to understand that I'm suffering, I'm suffering because of my sins and so I should, I should give up. Oh God. Not, not immediately, but after some time. When people become, a, when they're more mature, when they're more ready to understand, then they can appreciate the cause of suffering. Yes, women can go back to Godhead. Definitely. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Striyo Vaishya Stata Sudras Tepi Yanti Paramgatim. Even though we be of lower birth, like women and Vaishya and Sudra, we can all attain the supreme destination if we take shelter of Krishna. So certainly women can also go back to Godhead. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai.